last year, um, me and Sam Rat got in a little bit of a punch up with the Christian Democrat Party, <laughs> and it wasn't. It didn't. It wasn't with Fred Nile. It wasn't with the man himself. He's done a lot of good work over many decades, uh, and he's, 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 he's fought a hard slog. We can all see that. Correct. He's been a very integral part of the Christian movement in Australia and New South Wales. However, last year, Sam Rat and I were presented with what we called irregularities in matters that the board would deal with and certain individuals dealt with on the board. And basically, I presented those to the board. There were 11 of them, 11 of them that we could prove. Um, which just skimmed the surface. And some of these included hundreds of thousands of dollars of illegal payments. Sue me. Sue me, guys. Honestly, I've got the evidence right here. I'm looking at it. And it's in the media, so they can't. It's, well, it's in the media, but that's, that's another story that's coming up. And pretty much what's ended up happening is what ended up happening after that whole fiasco was we got a bunch of corrupt members of the board, and I use that. I don't hope you guys know me. I'm very cautious with my words. These are very corrupt individuals. They were running the party into the ground. They were fleecing old people that were donating to this party, which is ridiculous. And so Samra and I, we put our foot down, and we thankfully, with the help of Fred, we removed those people. We removed a, a, a bunch of people, including the, uh, the lawyer for the party, the party agent. Now, because there was a bit of, uh, there was a double standard that he was applying as well. Now, a, a story's just come out. The story shows that we've got a situation with Fred Nile's party again, which is imploding. This time, we've got problems with more money going to party funds being used for people's benefits, including Fred Nile's wife, Mrs. Nile. Now, look, it, it pains me to do it, to say this. Complete transparency, I know Mrs. Nile. She's a lovely lady. She really is. But nepotism was one of the things we pulled them up on in the meeting. I warned them. I said, if you keep going down this path, the party's going to go down a very bad situation. So currently, Fred Nile's political party is facing the axe, not only because of what's happening in the Supreme Court, they're being sued by their own treasurer, uh, Charles Knox, but they're also in a situation where, another thing I warned them about, their membership is dipping below 500 members so they could be up for deregistration for those of you that don't know of course you need 500 members to keep a party going in new south wales now why am i bringing this up it's not because i like looking back it's not because i like throwing stones you know it's not good to air people's dirty laundry in the wind it's because you guys are starting a party and we all three of us we've seen successful Actually, you know what? We've only seen unsuccessful parties. So we've got a very good basis and a very good uh, image to run away from. Mm. Let me ask you very directly, because we've got two members of the A1 political party. What makes Australia One so different? How are you going to avoid all of these issues in the party that I know you're familiar with because you've seen it in the past in other parties? How are you going to avoid this nepotism, illegal transfers, um, misuse of party trans uh, party funds what can you guys offer that every single director of our company is has to have done a company director's course so they have to know and will know their liability legally to the people that are actually to the members who are actually paying the money this is it's like government government doesn't make money, government takes money. And effectively, that's what a party does too. They take fees. So they have to be accountable for those fees that they take. So each, each director has to have done a company director's course. They will be legally liable to, uh, for every de single decision. Everything has to be, like most parties, catalogued as every decision. The treasurer is the one that ha is responsible for the account. How $100,000 can go waylay into personal accounts? That means somebody has allowed and authorised for that transaction or those transactions to occur. And that person should be held to account. In our party, everything with regards to anything financial has to actually go through um, the, the, what is it, the interim um, executive. Every expense has to be accounted for. Everything has to be um, managed. And if the person who is running those accounts does all of this sort of stuff, rather than, oh, well, you've had money transferred, 
then that person is going to be held legally liable for any transaction that they have um, done uh, rather than, oh, well, you know, the general thing. Everyone's got a, a legal responsibility because they've done that course mm. to actually know how they're going to be held to account. Okay. Well, the new board, we made sure once we got rid of the the old board, mm. the new board, we, we made a condition that they all go through um, – that training and, and which which ended up happening. Okay, and they still did it. Is this hundred thousand after that? Yes, oh. more recently. And they, look, these are these are the tough questions that every party should be asking them. The people are fed up. People aren't stupid. They can see what's going on. In fact, there was one illegal payment before this whole fiasco: hundred and forty hundred forty seven thousand dollars, which was claimed as staff wages for the twenty fifteen election. This particular payment was. Yeah, it baffled a lot of people and the board. And once they removed the board, the new board, which was reduced in 30 years in terms of age because the old board was really old, um, the new board ended up having uh, similar situations. So, I mean, this these questions are, I mean, I don't know how you solve this. I'll be honest with you. I just, I think a lot, it, it doesn't Auditing? take much to know there's a problem. Auditing? Um, because obviously we've got accountants that are going to be auditing, uh, and I think we're deciding whether it's quarterly. Mm. Um, they're going to be auditing the accounts on a quarterly basis. Um, beyond that... What we're doing is uh, we're going to be applying the same rules to the parties we apply to... Business. To business mm. and government. Specifically, one of them is, again, it's one of our policies, will be revealing in real time all expenditure. Mm. In real time. So we're going to do this as a party so the members can see it okay. immediately. Yep. Then when we become the government, and we will, both at state and federal level, we will ensure that there is real-time revelation of every cent spent mm. by government at both levels. Correct. Every cent mm. in real time. And uh, this is going to be very embarrassing for a lot of people. And you watch the expenditure stop very fast because people get busy, people get bored. Mm. And the fact that we paid $91 million to Hamas, a terrorist organisation, oh, well, you know, it's only $91 million. And they use that money to pay um, the families of suicide bombers. And uh, Malcolm Turnbull, $444 million to the Great Barrier Reef Foundation, who didn't ask for it, didn't want it, didn't know what to do with it. No tender. And shortly after that... The Great Barrier Reef Foundation was a, a preferred um, partner with the Clinton Foundation. Now, of course, of course, no money changed hands. There's no evidence of it, and it would be very wrong of me to say that this was a method of funneling taxpayers' money mm. to some Cayman Island account. Now, that would be wrong to say, mm. but something stinks. Yeah. So there's example, uh, and just by the way, silent Scott Morrison was the treasurer when that money was transferred. So Scotty, um, you're still for the high jump, mate. We have long memories. We will not forget. But there are expenditures like that that happen all the time. And the news cycle is so fast these days that people don't have time to keep up. But in real time, it'll be revealed. And I can guarantee you there'll be um, uh, organisations set up in Australia to track yep. this and highlight it. And hold to account every prime minister, every premier, every treasurer, state and federal, to explain why we spent so much money on this particular issue. Mm -hmm. So again, in answer to your question, how do we guarantee against it? Transparency, absolute transparency, and what we do at the party level, we're going to do it in the governmental level. Excellent. Now, look, that's, I think that's what people want to hear. I mean, in, the, in this age of technology, I think that's that's been a, become a real virtue, transparency, because people have s had such a gut full of endless wars, of their money being spent on like a new statue that they don't need. Um, very frustrating to see these kind of things come out. And it doesn't, you know, people trust uh, the media often more than politicians. That's, that's shocking. So look, I wish you all the best, Fred. I wish you all the best, Christian Democrat Party. I did my job last year and I left it to, to give the border an opportunity. In my books, you failed. Um, I think that the Christian Democrat Party has seen uh, the end of it. It had a good run. Um, don't don't make it don't make it difficult. Just just finish just finish the job, Fred. You've done a good job. You, have my, you still have my utmost respect. Um, Sorry, I must ask. Sure. Is this not coming out during the AGMs? Because every year, with regards to parties, this should actually be coming out to all of the members. 
and the members should actually be holding the executive to account. Now, in our party, we do, okay? And that's the, that's the process because we've learned from yep. the experience of other parties. Yep. But I'm just asking, do they not have a system where the, the members cannot turn around and say, hang on, what are you doing with my money? No. No. The, the, <laughs> this is the reality. Even, so Samra and I, I guess I'm telling the story now, we that made our first attempt on the 1st of June last year where we basically presented, we said, we, we want to dissolve this board. These are the reasons why. How was it met? Ross Clifford shut it down. He said, no, this is not, this is not permitted. You know, this is, you're out of order. It was perfectly in order. You just had to read the constitution. Um, and we had the numbers to vote them out and they, they walked, they stormed out of the room because they knew what it meant. Mm -hmm. And uh, we tried again in August. Um, I, I presented very cordially to the board of 13 members, which is insane for a party of 500, if that's the true number. The, I, I, I presented these um, grievances to them, 11, and basically they, they didn't, the board didn't pass a motion to dissolve the board. They passed a motion to get an external investigation, which affirmed a lot of the things we brought out, but they didn't pass a... Um, a, a, a movement to um, to to motion to uh, actually dissolve the board or the executive, and when we presented, because we didn't we didn't present this information completely to the members in in an in an, an annual general meeting, we we decided to remove the board on a credibility basis. Mm. Their funding was down by over a quarter of a million dollars um, since the last election rounds. In terms of votes, plummeted. When you've got a situation, and this is news, when you've got a situation where an atheist in one nation, Mark Latham, is doing more work for the greater religious groups in, in New South Wales by getting 20,000 respondents to his bill and 68% of them saying that they agree with the bill, when you've got that happening and the Christian Democrat Party going through this drama, why do you think your, your votes are plummeting? That's just the reality. And we, we made that argument to the, uh, to the board mm. in August last year. Nothing. We had 80 votes against us, 12 votes for us. We didn't convince a single person. We went in with 12 votes. Mm. And what does that show you? It shows you that the, the, the people that were left there were the most demagogue of people that had just lovely hearts. Mm. But the problem was loyalty to a fault to Fred Nile. Lovely man. Um, but the board, they couldn't see, they couldn't see that the board was corrupt. They couldn't see that they weren't performing. And so I would hope that Australia won, you know, complete transparency, credit where credit's true. I would hope that Australia won allows for open debate. And I think it does. I mean, ju judging for, for some, from some of the policies, like having primaries, I mm. think, I think you guys have got some really positive, uh, open debate environment. The, the free market of ideas going on. 